And she was like, dude, you're old. You're <laughs> I just, she, 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 she found a gray one. straggler. Yep. Yep. And I was like, oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. This one? It's good. Marker? Is it good? Uh, yeah. That was me. I can't All hear right. anything now. All right, we're back with the Second Win podcast. I think, we, I second think we're going to go I Second like Win. Second Win. Second, yeah. win. second Win's good. Uh-huh. With Dave, Eric, Dan, John, and featuring well, Bobby Chow. Why'd you pause like you forgot my name? You no, paused. I was thinking, like, should Eric? I say Daniel or Dan? <laughs> okay. Do you like Daniel better or do you like Dan uh, better? Just D. Like, like, Sorry, like my rap D. name. Vitamin D. D. <laughs> Heavy D. No, because the reason why is... I was Long editing the days. first episode, uh-huh. and I'm like, do I write Daniel Sandrin, or do I write Dan Sandrin? Oh, it's a that's tough why, one. Yeah. That's why I paused that. Existential on question. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're back, and uh, we're slowly kind of forming this thing that we have um, called the podcast. I like right? it. It's starting to look like a real... Yeah. We got a name. Thing going. Second Wind. That's huge. The, the name is good now? It no, only took us four episodes to get a name. <laughs> I think Second Wind is all right. I th- I'm, ha- I'm happy that we... Dave, how do you, what, do you, what do you think about Second Wind? I like it. Second wind, it's like uh, like sports. Yeah. Like that second wind. Yeah. Here for the fourth quarter, baby. All right. Woo! Or All right. overtime when shit matters. Now which, you want to change it to overtime? No, Just leave it. Just leave right. it. No, which we, we which will matter? The... Which will kind of come into? It's gonna matter when mm-hmm. we talk about our marquee topic. Okay. Right, which is the second wind, which is mental toughness. That's mm-hmm. why it all it all kind of uh, ties in. But let's just jump into our mini topics, all right? Okay. First one. I like it. I, I love it, Dan. Um, or D. No, I'm just, I'm, that was a joke. That <laughs> was you a can't, joke. You can't say it like that, though. You're like, D? Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't say it. That sounds weird. What's up, D? Oh, that's yeah, nice. That's, that's, that's that looks natural. If, if you do like that, then it's better. But if you're like, hey, D. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds, sounds nuts. Kind of like weird. Yeah. Yeah. D's nuts. D's nuts. nuts. And it's nuts. also like the topic that I didn't share with you guys that I at some point I do want to share. My my childhood story oh. that that Ooh. you know how Dave shared yeah, his childhood. Yeah. There's one from my childhood. It's not sports related, mm. but it's kind of uh, it needs to be unpacked a little bit. Okay, mm. all right. Okay. But but anyway, like these so, nuts, guys. For the rest of the podcast, just for this episode, can you guys just refer to me as D's nuts? Don't call me Dan. Don't call me Daniel. Don't call me D. Everyone just refer to me as D's nuts. Just we'll, for this episode, we'll do D's nuts. D's nuts. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Hmm. All right, so so let's get just jump right to it. You'll okay. be, be Mike and Hunt, Mike Hunt. Okay, how about, I'll be Ben. Mike Hunt. Michael Chu. Michael Chu. I like Michael Chu. That one's a nice one too. All right, actually, it is a nice one. But anyway, um, so let's talk about the pay gap between men, athletes, great, great. right, men and women. Right in in professional sports. Let's start start with professional sports. And Overpaid. Like, who men, men or, or women? Both. Even the women. Even the uh, women. Okay, you're right. The women women could get more money. Dave, how much do you think women make? How much do you think a WNBA player makes? Mm, wow, I would say on the bench she's making about sixty five to hundred thousand. If you're a starter, you're making about three fifty to a million. Eric, is that correct? You're, you're Eric knows because obviously yeah. wife yeah, yeah. Uh, pro ba- pro baller. No, like the, the 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 top. I think the salary cap is like a little over hundred grand. So the top players the top are making players. salary cap. On, on the, the so what are the bench players making? The bench players are making probably between sixteen. And Didn't you hear that? Haven't you read that stat where um, Steph Curry is making more money than the entire WNBA? But then also like taking into <laughs> taking into consideration this, the WNBA season is only like three to four months. It's a summer league. Mm. So yeah. if you're making a hundred grand for three months of work, you're basically making like thirty grand a month. But you said that's the top, the top. Right, right. So, so like the other the other girls that are on there, you know, you still might be making like ten know, a month or 10, something. 15, 20 yeah. a month. Like do they have a retirement program? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's I'm a good sure. question. I mean, probably, I'll look that pro- up. Pro- probably they probably do because like the 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 M- NBA does, and like they have an association and everything. So okay. I, I, I mean, I'd be surprised if they didn't. And a lot of these players have to go overseas and play in the off season, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, most of the players, more money. most of the players, like, play abroad, and then, like, Then now, there's big money in those leagues. Yeah, for sure. I mean, most of, like, there's no, I mean, I, I don't know of any players right now that make more money in the WNBA than they do overseas. Wait, so, oh, oh, really? So then, Korean players make more money than the WNBA players? Yes. A lot of them do. Wow. Right, at the top level, mm. right? That's interesting. A so a player like Sonia, <clears throat> Sonia Kim, oh, she's, well, pro- she's probably making more. Much If more you than just play in the WNBA... Which I don't think anybody just plays this, in the WNBA. This happens a lot, though. This isn't only for women's sports. There's a lot of guys that play overseas that make a lot more money than NBA players. 
Guys just because you're in the NBA doesn't mean you're. Yeah, I think, I think we finished up better than a lot of our peers that yeah. played a couple oh, years yeah, in the league, yeah, yeah. for sure. After, I would say after, that. After taxes and all that kind of stuff, you're paying tax in every state, plus going to Canada. Like, you're not making a lot of money. We know a lot of guys. Let's just put it this way. We know a lot of guys that were better basketball players that are working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car right now. For sure. Like, but that were dope basketball players, you know. Man, so they and played pro. So it would have been good if had they gone overseas and played in like some of the Asian. A lot of people won't go overseas, guys, but why is well, that? A lot of guys don't want to. They don't want to leave. They don't want to like deal with whatever it is being overseas. They want to be at home. So they'd rather just quit and work at Enterprise. They'd rather play in the D League, like play. Well, like, quit, quit, whatever. One of the guys from our hometown was like D League. He played like what ten years. Will Conroy. He played. He's got the record for most six in the D League. But or, but or like, they make uh, like two grand a month. What's his name? Something. Andre Andre Ingram. He was on the Lakers. He came up for like a right, ten day right. contract. But Remember he was in the D League forever. That feel good story. Right, he right. Had like a, but talking about white hairs. Yeah, yeah. A bunch it, of white it hair. would it would be worse if you were in the in the D League for that long and didn't have any records. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I guess. So. Okay, I don't know so, if we answered that question, but so what? Wait, wait. So more money? I I think I think like for me, my personal stance is that any athlete wherever you're playing, you're underpaid. Because the owners yeah. make way fucking more money. Like, whatever they're paying the WM players, it's not enough. Whatever LeBron James is making, not enough. Whatever they're paying Messi is not enough. doesn't matter. Every athlete's underpaid. And because Dave, the owners are making more money. No, no. And yeah. Dave feels like you feel they're you know, I didn't know. You know, I didn't know that the owners... You, we talked about this yeah. before. I didn't know the owners make that much more money. Like, I didn't yeah. realize that the endorsement deals were that great. Huge, yeah. But how much are, are, like, for example, a big, just let's say an average team, what do they make? What does the team make? Well, just think about this. If they can afford to pay LeBron James that much money, how much money do you think they're making? I, I think like a team like the Lakers, yeah. I think they're, they're doing really well. I think we talked about this like last time a little bit. Yeah. Not every team makes money, but it's right. like the league. They're selling jerseys overseas. They're making the TV contract. So the whole basketball structure is making Brand. a ton of money, so, so but for, not every individual team. Yeah, because the Charlotte Hornets, right. let's say, right? Yeah, they're I, probably, I wouldn't think they're, they're probably making broke. that much money, but, but the team is worth, like, yeah. you know, they say Michael Jordan's worth went up to whatever billion. Of course. So the team's probably worth the over The team billion. goes up. Right. Uh, they might not make any revenue off, off that, but the NBA is making money off the TV contracts because Charlotte will play the Lakers, you know? Yeah. Charlotte will well, play. Like this, I mean, it, like, it's a business. Like, if it didn't make money, then they wouldn't be in the league. Right. Would, like, there, there's got to be a reason for the NBA to be like, you know, we need a team in Charlotte, and we can afford to pay – uh, whatever it is, Nicholas Batum, forty million a year. If they can afford to pay him that money, they're not going to take a loss on his salary. So, at what point, yeah, do we do we say, man, you know what, this is just too much money. Uh, we got to stop paying him so much, or or will I think it's the opposite. I think you got to pay him more. <laughs> or does the market? I think does the market needs... just determine that. If if people are watching, then does that mean we just got to pay them more? But or? that's interesting because you could do that for men's sports, but you couldn't do that for women's sports. But why is that for women's Because sports? women's sports doesn't make any revenue. Yeah. yeah. So, it, and that's why, is, is sports a business, like strictly a business? Or is sports just something good? Like it's good for young girls to have role models to look up to, to, yeah. to have those same opportunities Absolutely, as guys. So man. I think Absolutely. with women's sports, it's more of like, you need women's sports like for society. It's yeah. good for you. I want my daughter to have exactly. a dream now and that stuff I have like nieces. that. And I think that's something good that regardless of whether it makes money business-wise, I think it's something that we should support as a society. Because, for example, the U.S. women's national soccer team. Right. And that, do, that was huge. On the world stage, they do so much better than the men. Right. Right. But, of course, you know, that, that pay difference. So it's like, do we, just because they're ranked higher? I mean, I mean look, look at this. Like, me and my brother, when, uh, when we were at University of Portland, our, our women's soccer team was, like, great. We had, like, three girls on the national team and, like, a couple of girls that were, like, starting, playing, playing really well, right? The Women's World Cup one of those years was hosted in Portland, right? Like, for, for soccer. And this the, the is like actual the, the actual world. world. We worked it. We worked. We, worked we volunteered. The world Cup. We volunteered to work there at the World Cup, right? Who won that year? I think it was Brazil. Oh, or something. Okay. I'm not sure. It might have been Brazil or America, right? But like the World Cup for men is like hosted in like stadiums where they have like you know 200,000 yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. like it was real small. The time. revenue, like you know, whatever money they're making is 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 insane. But then like if they want to like put these on on. A, I think so I don't know. To, I feel because you have a daughter, yeah. I have nieces. Then how do we make? How do we bring in more money for how, how does one I don't know what is it or if as long as the market doesn't like it or if there's no um, demand for it then just the money won't go I up I think I think for like I mean women's women's professional sports honestly like <laughs> it's like, gonna be a like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you think about women's professional sports I think this like, is important when we were younger it didn't exist yeah, right? yeah. No. so now like it, it's a pretty like new thing yeah but, like within the past like what like 10 20 years like women's professional sports are around I think it's growing, and like in the future, who knows? I mean, yeah. who knows where it's gonna go? 
but like you know like little girls like women they need they need this needs to be there but like where it have where it goes in the future i mean the nba didn't start off where people were making millions of yeah and, and and women's sport might get there like it just because it's not profitable nba does a lot of stuff nba cares they do a lot of community outreach it, they don't make any money off that, but that doesn't mean it's not a valuable, good thing to do. And and who knows, women's basketball might get to a point where it does make money. I hope it um, does. Yeah, but it's yeah. just a good thing to do. Like, uh, I, I I think women's uh, women athletes, not just basketball players, need to make more money, and I think they need to support it like they're doing now. Like the NBA subsidizes the WNBA. Yeah, I think I think a lot of like a lot of like the problems is like they don't classify them as professional sports. Hmm. Like there was a big issue in in, in I think it was Greece. Where like one of the teams like they're cutting a lot of like the teams because they're like oh it's not professional. And it's like if the people are like well they're not getting salaries like they're not practicing or they're not like doing what other professionals do, so it's like the classifications are kind of like it like and that's what like, it, that's fucked up. And it, when it when you don't give a minimum salary or whatever it is, that's when it starts getting you know like a lot of the UFC fighters well, or a lot of the MMA fighters like yeah. just to fight that one fight they go into debt. Like mm-hmm. when you're not mm-hmm. one of the top yeah. fighters, I'm, I'm saying going the same, to debt saying they're not a pro is fucked. Like it it pros. fucks the quality. They're doing of the, the same amount of like hours for preparation for whatever it is. You know, yeah. to say they're not a pro and be like, oh, we can't like you know because it's an amateur sport. That's bullshit. You know what's funny? Had we had this conversation like 15 years ago, just mm-hmm. four dudes, right? Mm-hmm. With the, oh, fuck women's sports. Oh, for know? sure, yeah. for sure. But now I feel really strongly that like it's just mm-hmm. it's well, changed, I, I, and I used to be uber capitalist on the whole thing. Like when I would watch WNBA games and I'd be like. Then there would be nobody there. We would go, and I'd be like, "Huh?" Like, I would be like, "Yeah, their salaries make sense," but you know, now just thinking about it, like this is just good for society, so it needs to be supported. I think. Well, like they've they've changed. Like when the WNBA started to like they were trying to fill out like NBA arenas, you know, like they, they were playing the same places and, and like they weren't getting the fan support. Now, like they've they've changed that around, and like the fan base for the WNBA is crazy. Like the place they're playing, like they're selling out places. Like it's, it's good to hear. You yeah, know, it's insane. It's like, yeah. Well, hopefully things will get better as we move on to our next topic. <laughs> <laughs> our main topic, actually, we spent Bobby, the where's long, the buzzer? We, spent we the hit long, the buzzer just everyone ignored it. We spent a long it. time on this, so let's just jump to the main topic of of uh, of mental toughness. Right? All right. So how do we? Like that, we talked about this, right? We talked about physical on episode two. We talked about you right. know, physical health, but I think just as important is the mental health. And you know, we were talking about like for some coaches, I wish you know coaches would have um, gone into more mental health and whatever, right? Or, or mental uh-huh. mental toughness. So how does one build mental toughness as an athlete, as a whatever else that you do? How does one go about building it? Because this would benefit any arena as an actor. As a just right. whatever industry, anything you're in. like job yeah. inter- job interview prep, test prep, like yeah. it's all that mental prep. It's the you know, rep- you know, repetitions, right? So, what what do you think, Dave? We'll start with you on this. Mental toughness, um, as far as the job in front of the camera. I mean, you got to get your reps in. You got to feel. I mean, it's, it's like basketball, right? You got to feel comfortable. You got to take all those jumpers. So when you're in the game, I mean, it's pretty cliche. So to enough say. practice. Enough practice to get you in the game. So it, it's not really. A thing it's just like second nature but you're confident so you'd say like like a lot of times like when we're practicing like you got to practice so much that when you get to the main stage then it's like repetition where it doesn't feel like yeah right I, but i think that's like common i mean that's like basic right you have to put your your yeah. ten thousand hours or whatever you want to say but what do you guys am I, i'm curious when you guys before you start a professional basketball game before you go into the arena what is the mental pre- preparation when you walk on there and you start taking the warm-up shots and you walk on to start that game, what are you guys thinking about? You know what I mean? So I think, I think like, that old-school approach is what we took, like, um, and now they're hacking that approach where you just do a bunch of reps. Like, I used to shoot thousands of jump shots. And then when I go on the court for the big game, I'd have all these butterflies. Right. And then in warm-ups, I'm trying to get my mental prep through physical repetition, mm-hmm. right? But I think now, so me, I just go up and shoot a bunch of shots, get a good sweat and warm up and warm ups, and then start the game. The first quarter was always a little shaky, but then I'd level out throughout the game, mm. and that's basically mental preparation through physical activity, which is what all the old school coaches did: reps, reps, reps. Now they're hacking that, and they're they're trying to get to a point where you can get your mental preparation without doing you know a thousand hours in the gym like Jordan and Kobe, you know. So what? One what, what of my coaches like when when he was. Cause he, he kind of like told me earlier, he's like, I think you got like some kind of performance anxiety, like some game anxiety, whatever. So he's like, before the game, like sit down and play the game in your mind before you go out and play. Wow. So like, he's like, just go find a quiet place, like however many minutes you need. 
It's like get to your spots. He's like play these like things out in your mind before you get on the court. So like you know before every game like I would you know visualize visualize a couple okay. things like my defender and you know, me dunking on him or whatever it was, and then kind of prep myself so that when I went in to take my reps, I'm like all right I've already done this. So when you go in the game, you hit shots and like whatever you're doing, you've already done it in your mind. So when you're doing it, it's almost you're like bringing to reality what you've already seen. I read about I read about Jamal Murray. Um, he was saying since he was a little kid, his dad made him uh, do uh, what was kind of... yoga. No, not yoga. Meditation. Jump rope. Meditation. 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 So he said he can meditate his heartbeat down to like a really, really, really Just low huge. heartbeat. Mm. So, I mean, he, I mean, it showed in the playoffs. He was doing really well, right? Like every. Like every like every player, like not everyone's mind is like works the same. So like a lot of, like there's a lot, a lot of guys that just need to get in the gym and get a thousand percent. And that relaxes their mind. And there's other guys that like don't need to do that, like and just can can whatever meditate and, and like lower their heartbeat. Because and you know, there. like okay, you know? let's say LeBron is a good free throw shooter, right? No, 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 no he's I mean, not. He. I meant to say he's a bad free throw shooter, right. but you know he shot a million free throws in his life. At the right? pro, so where at the pro so why, level why, repetitions, everyone shoots the yeah, same. Exactly. Everyone practices the so same. Why at the pro is level. Um, why is there a big difference? Why can't he shoot better free throws? It's a it's definitely a mental thing, I would say, because mm -hmm. you know he can he hits threes like so and he can shoot and he hits clutch shots, other and, shots, right. right? So it's just something you know people get caught up with something in their mind, the demon in their mind, where it's about the free throws and maybe he's got some anxiety about the free throws. I think it's probably like, for like, I, I know like shooting free throws sometimes, like it's so easy, you've done it so many times, you just already know that it's in. And then when you miss a couple, you're like, what, wait, how did I miss? Like, it, because it's so easy. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like when you miss a layup, you miss layups and you're like, how the fuck did that happen? But you just like, gotta forget it and, and then, then go on to the next and then, one. And then you're probably like thinking like, man, this is easy. I'm gonna do this. And you're like, but I didn't miss last time. Shit, I better not miss this time. And it's like that weird yeah, yeah. mental thing that plays because it's not like he's. I mean, has LeBron ever made a free throw? Yeah. Has he made like you know he's not scared of the moment. You're not like oh he's scared of the moment. He's not clutch. Like he is. But yeah, he is super clutch. But he just something mind. about free throws that he, he wasn't so clutch in Cleveland though in the beginning years. Right, right, he right. wasn't so clutch. He would defer. He defer even like when Kyrie Irving was. Right. He was deferring a lot. But he stepped into it. He, oh, no, no. But he, even he by the time Kyrie got there, he was clutch. Like, he, like during that one playoff run where he made, like, four or five game winners right, mm -hmm. against Indiana. Every, going, going everyone the right always side. says, though, that they're, they're, they're like, they would give, they would probably hand LeBron the goat if he would have hit that shot that Kyrie hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a Because they, they were like, shot. LeBron didn't really, like, bring it. I mean, like, you look at the stats, obviously. Kyrie's does, but, like, still living off that shot, just to be fair. Yeah, but, <laughs> he is, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. But Le LeBron's like he's stepped into that because like I think he's embraced it because everyone was saying he's not clutch, and whatever he did, like you know, he turned himself into like a super clutch performer. Yeah, he changed it around. Yeah. So like really, it's not it's not just about because you were talking about the reps, right? I really don't think it's just about the reps. It can't be the reps. It can't be it the can't reps, be. right? Because I think that's more. what people that don't want to like yeah. dive into the mental aspect. Yeah. They're like, oh, you just need to practice more. And I think that's just something that our grandfathers told our dads and our dad. But now they're, the people that are really getting into the mental side, yeah. like what you're saying, when you get panicked, your heart rate goes faster. Oh, yeah. And so with Jamal Murray, that really rings true to me because it's whoever can stay calm at the very most intense moments. Right. Everyone who, who gets a bunch of reps will shoot good in the first half. The people that really understand mental, mm -hmm. uh, you, unless you're just a <clears throat> moron and you have nothing going on up there, if you're if you're a somewhat intelligent player, the fourth quarter you will start feeling that pressure. And who can stay calm? You know, maybe yeah. regulate their own heartbeat through mental techniques. But if you're just I got to get reps, you're never going to learn those mental techniques. And that's why a lot of idiots are really good athletes because there's nothing going on. Upstairs. They're just not yeah. thinking, and they just yeah, they don't that, see the that's moment. That's true. Yeah. Bobby, huh? J.R. Smith. What about before you perform? Right? Yeah. What 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 how are you, you thinking? Calm down? How do you calm yourself? And what what do you do? Um, it's changed over the years, but yeah. Early on, I used to down like down uh, beers. Okay, that's a good. That's a good way to stay calm. That is. Yeah, uh, but now lately it's more breathing. Ooh. Okay, so tell us about your breathing. breathing. Um, I just kind of like sit sit down, turn my phone off, just try to get. See, it's it's the phone. Be alone, and then I'll uh, I'll just make sure I'm. I'm Doing heavy breathing, like deep breathing. Through your nose or through your mouth? Because I heard that makes a difference. Well, now that I got my deviated septum, yeah, surgery, yeah. Right nose now, looks I can great. Use my no nose now. Mm. Yeah. But before it was like I just just. just so you do that, and does that make a big difference? Absolutely. How how has it been works. different for you? Um, just I I mean it seems to be the best thing to work that works for me. 
Um, so, I don't know. When I, when I go on stage, yeah. I know that uh, the nerves will never 100% be gone. Mm -hmm. But if I take a care, care of the breathing thing at least, then I have a better shot at doing a better job. Okay. So just like it's a per per percentage thing for me. Does it calm your heartbeat? Is that what the breathing does for you? Yeah, it just kind of gets me into a state of like, you know, I think what it is is when you're when you're nervous and and out of out of yeah. that zone. Uh, if you don't get your breathing right, then you're not really getting enough oxygen, you know, into your. Hmm. And you kind of have that primal like fight or flight. Anytime you're anxious, the yeah, stress, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's that primal f like fight or flight. And I think if you can calm that down. And that, then the beers help. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> that don't, you know, if that don't help, the breathe, just down yeah, a couple more beers? It's whiskey now. Like, uh, I'll, I'll do whiskey. The refined, man. Yeah. Mm. It makes my voice a little more husky. Too. Nice. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, ah. Have a drink. I think everyone, everyone, like, you know, whether it's breathing, I think breathing will help everyone. Like, yeah. that's how I personally feel. But, yeah. like, everyone else has got to, like, find whatever technique it is. Like, like you look at all these players. I'm sure actors, singers have the same, like, a, like a pre-set routine or pre-game routine or what you go through to prep yourself for that moment, you know. And I'm sure, like, if you ask anyone at any level, like, especially the people that are good at what they do, they have something that they do. I think maybe it's, like, we're trying, it's placing the focus on something. So you're breathing. You're placing the focus off of yourself, mm -hmm. getting out of your head placing the focus on the task at hand. So tell me about before you shoot, like you're about to shoot something, but let's let's go back to like, let's say when you were shooting Mr. Sunshine with um, like Yi Bien Wan, no. right? What did you do? Because I know that, you know, that's a lot of pressure. He's one of the biggest actors in, in the country, right? Yeah, yeah. And I you had nervous. some really, you know, those key scenes, that one right. scene on the rooftop or whatever, where you guys are both drinking. What were you, what was going through your mind before you shot and what, what, what did you do to calm yourself? Because you did a good job in, in Mr. Oh. Sunshine. Um, Mainly was staying on my on my objective of what the scene was about, what I'm trying to do in the scene, and just stay focused on on the other character. I stay focused on him, what he's what he's doing, how he's reacting. Take the focus off of me, what I'm trying to do, um, and just keep it more dialed into uh, first what's what's the scene about, what I need to focus for the scene, my character, mm -hmm. what's needed because I was a supporting character, and that I'm supporting him as the main lead. And so I'm supporting his journey. So as long as I could focus on that, it helped a lot. But I get nerves just before we shot that scene. It was. It and was so what did crazy. you do to down those nerves? Mm, I just focused on the, the what task. You just said. Okay. It's the task. It's like you just have to really take all that cloudiness out and just focus right on like okay, and then put a lot of your attention on him. I think it's like kind of like you're saying like at, when you get to that level, there's a point where you have to embrace it. Where like, you know, whatever you're doing, like I know every time I went to a game, I felt like a little butterflies, whatever. Mm. And like if you if you're like, oh my god, why am I nervous? Then you kind of go down that road. You can go down a whole different rabbit hole. Nah. So you got to kind of embrace like whatever yes. you're saying. That's like, huge. Like you're like, okay, I got this scene. I'm I'm in here. I'm supporting this guy. Whether mm. you lead or the support, if you accept all that, then you can probably focus on your task. Right? I think I think like with the nerves, like you were talking about calming the nerves. And I'm glad that you can't completely calm the nerves because yeah. after you get to a certain level, yeah. that's what makes it fucking exciting. That's yeah. the adrenaline rush. But at first, when you're scared of failing, yeah. those it's the same butterfly feelings, but you can run from it. And then later on, when you get calm, yeah. and then that little bit just makes it jarite, you know? Yeah. You know, you know. for me, before a big game, let's say before playing uh -huh. any game, I just feel like all the fucking energy is out. It just exits my legs and my arms. I have no, no strength. I can't do shit, right? And then something happens. Someone hits me. Some something. And then you get you get. And then it, it's like it's and on. It, it knocks me out. But like I remember last tournament, like a month ago, uh -huh. I was horrible for the first five minutes because I was just not there. I was like a zombie. Mm -hmm. And one of my teammates was like John, wake up, wake up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. And then something kind of got me into gear, but mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell. So I'm I still struggle with this, right? That's what's amazing about like I mean when you see guys, I'm sure like when you were working with Ibn and you like probably saw him and were like observing his process too. When you see people that are great and like you're working around this, you're like, I wonder what he's doing. And so then you kind of observe and watch and you can see how they can just turn it on and off. Where like great players, like you watch and you can see like they would do whatever they're doing. And then like, like what you say in Bolt would go eat McDonald's, play with the people around him and all of a sudden like when the lights come on, he's just locked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's, it's amazing for like those people at that level to just be able to just flip that switch and now it's on. And then when the switch goes off, they're like back to, to whatever they're doing. You know, you know it's funny. He, he said to me, 
was it was after a, just the, the, the doesn't mean anything anymore <laughs> no no but the marquee topic we spend a little uh, more time on it so. john, john keeps trying to justify the alarm no it's working it's no, working it's fine it's fine that's good mental we'll work figure out a, that's figure. it's the mental he said to me once after a scene we finished our first scene together the first or second scene i can't remember we go back to the dressing room and take our makeup off and shit and uh-huh. he looked at me and I think you could tell that I was a little bit like, just started the character, wasn't really planted. And he goes, easy money. And, you know, he just said that to me. He looked at me and says, easy money. That's fucking cool just thinking about him saying that. Yeah. 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 In English. In English. Dude yeah. speaks English. Very, yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very good. But then I looked at him and I said, I go, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I never forget that now. So now whenever I go perform, I usually think about that. What, did, what, do, you, what do you think he meant by that, though? Easy money? I, you know, it's... You know what I mean? You can take that in so many different, so many different ways, right? Yeah. Don't like, put too much pressure on your... It's yeah. just an ah, easy there job, go. maybe. There you go. Just there you go. It's like, just, just fucking yeah. do it, right? Yeah. Just, you know. Like, we're having fun out here. God. He, he yeah. probably, too, like, you know, yeah. can understand, like, sometimes you can feel like a heavy situation. And he's probably like, look, let me lighten this up. You know, this is, you know, this is what we do. You know, you've been working your whole life. All the hours are there. You know, it's not like if I get in the gym and take one more jump shot, is that going to make me hit the winning shot? No. no. It's like, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? Go practice more? You're already there. You know, whatever you've done to get to this point, yeah. you're already here. And so he's like, shit, now it's like the easy part. So that game I was talking about where I started off like it's a zombie, dope, yeah. I made the game winner because I, I was calm in the end, right? I, I made that game winner, but not, not about me. I want to go back to <laughs> totally no, no, no. about no, 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 you no, no. with the glory. <laughs> turning, it, okay. turning it, turning it away from me. What I meant was turning it away. Got carried from off the court. No big. Yeah, eh, eh, you know. Levitated. But 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 Eric, there were times, and even last year, I was watching mm-hmm. you in a tournament. You made you just hit like three threes in a row, and you made that game winner. And then you made a couple game winners on the the three on three. I remember several months ago, right? Mm-hmm. Do you can you think back to what you were thinking? Like in that play, and when you made with that game winner, what was going through your mind during that one moment? I mean, like a lot of times when when it's going down, it's like time score. Like you, like for me, like if I'm gonna go take a shot when the game's running, I want to go to a place where I've, where I'm comfortable. I'm gonna go to my spot where I know I can get the shot off, whether it goes in or not. Is so the that's point. the practice. Going back like, to your, yeah. it's like I'm gonna put myself in a situation where I've taken this before. Mm. Whether it goes in or not isn't important. It's like I've already put myself in a situation where I'm comfortable. Get in that space, and then you're out there doing your job. Your yeah. job isn't to make shots. Your job is to take shots. So you go out there, you hey. get in that situation, and then, then you get in that. And then sometimes they go, mm. and sometimes they don't. But you just gotta you gotta be okay with it not going in. So yeah. like I'll look at that situation. It gets silent. You watch the clock go down, and you just go into your motion. Yeah. I think deep. I think um, in sports and like wherever things in my life, maybe it relates to what you're saying, and all of us. When you want it. When you really want it, mm. like you want that last shot, and it, there's there's no yeah, like there's like nothing that. else in your mind but I'm taking that shot, mm. I'm making that shot, I want that shot, mm. right? But some fuckers they shouldn't be taking one, they shouldn't. Be oh no, it. those LA fitness motherfuckers <laughs> that are like, I'm open, I'm open, and you give them the shot, and it's like, make it rain, yeah. and they yeah. look at their hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I was like, you should have gave me a good pass. I'm like, oh, yeah, no. it was the pass. Uh, the pass made you not make the shot. But that stuff, we, you know, we've all been in the zone. Uh-huh. That is the best, best feeling. Mm-hmm. When you're in the zone and then you, you, you do the job and then you think about it the night before you go to sleep. It's just like, yeah, it felt so good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ain't nothing like it, man. Ain't nothing no, like nothing it. like it. Like the zone is like what... And you come off stage and yeah, come off the court. Whatever it is, man. Right? Well, I think that's a big thing. Like, like, like... We talked about it a little bit with the bubble. It's like some people have stage fright and they're scared mm-hmm. of the, the people watching. They don't want to fall flat on their face in front of a bunch of people. And then some people, they can't really get up to do it unless there's that motivation from the crowd. I remember, um, I'm not a very good high jumper, um, but I did a dunk contest in Korea. And and I won. But the first, I didn't win my high school dunk contest. But Eric came out. Eric flew out for that time. And Eric was like kind of, co- he's won a ton of dunk contests. And... Uh, Eric was like, you got to put someone in a chair and jump over him. I was like, I've never done that before. I don't think I could do it. But I think the combination of Eric's like, dude, you could totally do it. He yeah. always does this, and I, I totally can't. <laughs> but I think just the crowd, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't think I could have done that in just a practice court. But I think the situation with the crowd, and I made my first dunks. I did like a 180, dropped it down to my yeah, knees yeah. And, and put it in. Yeah. And I did like a... I call it a 360, but it was probably like a five something, whatever, or, or no, not like it was probably like, <laughs> like a, a two, a 260 or whatever. Did like a three quarter turn, um, 
And so once those went down, I was feeling good. The crowd was into it. And then Eric was like, do it, do it. And so I was like, yeah. And I just went out and the crowd, I think, made me jump higher or something. I like, can see that. Landed it in one, one, one. I didn't need wow. a two tries or anything. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Nailed it the first time. And I've never done, never done it again. Wouldn't even attempt it, like, you know. Let's find That's that awesome. shit on YouTube. Yeah. yeah like, like, it. Like it's two thousand eight. Like, like sometimes, sometimes when you're in the moment, like you just you can just do different yeah, stuff. You yeah, know? When you're in the yeah. zone, you just and then you think back, how the hell did I do that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, like like in that moment, I was like, shit. Like you know, we we've been in so many dunk contests before and all this kind of stuff, and I was like, Fuck but you've won all of them. I I previously <laughs> lost every single dunk contest. I was like, but shit. It was it was dope, yeah. man. Like you had like the that was that was like a I, I could tell like how you were flying too because you were doing dunks I never seen you do before. Like you were you were like you were really like flying. All right. Speaking of flying, okay, we will fly to our next topic. Yes, <laughs> great segue. Oh, we're on the buzzer. This is the first time we've we've timed it with the buzzer. So before we do our last, ever, did you guys prepare a cool thing to share? Something you've been into? Uh, I've got. You one. got something? Yeah, I got, got some homework. I totally forgot Talk to about tell homework? you. Homework? Think about something cool. Uh, Think about something cool that you're kind of into, like an app or whatever. <laughs> on the spot, Bobby. On the spot. On the spot. Music. By the way, um, Bobby's uh, press conference, the, 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 what do you call it? Press conference for the movie. That's why the bow tie. Amazing. Yeah. We got the press. Awesome. Awesome. Looking dapper, ready to go, man. The dapper Don. So I have these icebreaker cards. And they have six topics, right? Got Life, random. So one is life, random, deep, experiences, if you could, dot, 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 or would you rather, dot, dot, dot. Let's pick one. I just want to answer it real quick before we jump on to our last Would thing. you rather? Would you rather? Oh, is okay? that how it works? Yeah, yeah. You pick it up. Let's, oh, we should all we all? No, no, I mean, let's all just go with one for the, today, I guess. Would you rather? Okay. Cool. Okay, so it's a dark, okay, would you rather? All right. A good drinking game. I That's always like I always like the ones. Would you rather bang a fat chick or, or would, a dude? Uh, in <laughs> the hayfield. You know what I mean. Oh shit. Okay, this is kind of cool. Okay. Would you rather never read another book okay. or never watch another movie? I'd rather watch another movie. You'd yeah. rather read books for the rest of your life. Mm. What about your What about you guys? What about you, Bobby? I'd probably give up books. You'd give up books, yeah. so you'd stay with movies. What about you? I Dan? like books. But when I really think about my actual behavior, I watch a shitload of more movies than I do books, so I'm giving up books. What do you think about books? Books? I, I'd give up movies. And, and I, I, I even write, but... Do you read I, more movies? No, read or, do you or read more... audio. Read or audio. You, you, have to give up, you have to give up the audio. Do you watch more movies or read more books? I can, I can books? read, then. Do you watch yeah. more movies or read more books? I, it's about even. Really? I read a lot of books. Okay. But don't forget about the documentaries are part of movies, right? That's true, right. but... Okay, <laughs> cool. I, I love books, so... All right. Well, let's jump to the. Let's All right, jump you to intellectuals. Cool we'll just be the movie birds over here. <laughs> We're just the dumbass. <laughs> yes, the dumbass. I want my Netflix. All right, let's jump to uh, the cool things that we, you wanted to share with each other or with the five people that are going to subscribe. So. Um, okay. Yeah. I think we just got on a six subscriber. There you uh, go. All right. <laughs> so who wants to start this out? Thank you. Well, go, go, I'll Dave. go. I'll go. Yeah, yeah. YTU. What's that? Well, yeah. What does that stand for? What's Y-T-U? YTU? What is it? You Something know? Dave's YouTube really, really YouTube University. Into. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube. Ah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can find everything. Yeah. Everything there. Everything. It's amazing. And uh, how to deep fry turkey? Yeah. Recently, I'm just uh, I got to learn Latin, and I didn't know where to turn. And, you know, I went just went to YouTube and uh, started searching out some guys, and there's guys out there that they're like, for instance. He dissected. There's a new show on Netflix called Barbarians. It's a oh, I've seen German, yeah, yeah, yeah. German produced show, and all the Latin in there. He dissected the Latin and kind of like, you know, from from the origin where it's you know how how authentic it is, uh-huh. and broke it down. And he did all the episodes on every on, on, on bar- bar- Barbarians, and he does oh, that's sweet. vowels and teaches Dude, you how to I do the vowels. I could help you out with the Latin. Akfe uye. Akfe Come on, dog. Come on. Pig Latin. The pig, pig Latin. Latin. Pig, Latin. <laughs> pig Latin. You don't know Pig Latin? I don't know Pig Latin. What's Pig Latin? Oh, my God. You, got, you don't know Pig Latin? I don't know. I don't know. I know what it is. We'll have a little class afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just think YouTube is great. Like, I go there for my van life videos, building videos. If I got to edit videos, I'll go there and type anything yeah. in there to learn. Mm. Awesome. 
Who wants to go next? Uh, I'm just going to say mine is just the whistleblower podcast. It, it dissects um, basically no. corruption in the NBA specifically mm. about the – and it's just – the whole multi-level thing. It's not just about sports gambling. It's about how this is all sanctioned and how the FBI. It's a, it's a really good podcast. And then just one real quick specific to Korea. Amazon now delivers free to Korea on orders over a hundred dollars. So oh, dude, just oh, I'm just gonna badass. drop that. Dude, I'm gonna drop badass. that. Y'all use it. Yeah. Make Jeff Bezos richer. Yeah. 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 Oh Absolutely. my God. That's great okay. to know, though. Bobby? Yeah. Um, I've been really into watching uh, The Office. Uh, which, which one? Which, American or the British? Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. So, but I always, like, whenever I can, I just have it playing. Mm. Even if I'm not fully into it. Mm -hmm. just like, but I just have it playing at home. That's my way to, like, relax. But what, are, it, it, they took it off Netflix, right? I have, I have you just the download series. It? Okay. Oh, that, oh, that okay. I digitized. And I, I just keep it on, like, loop. That's smart. Is that right? You like the humor, obviously? Yeah. I, I think mean, it's hilarious. Yeah, I think it. I see myself in so many, most of all in Michael. Yeah. He's so crazy and just like set, like, he, it's like a, what, a, like a train wreck ready to happen. Kind uh -huh. of thing, right? But I see so much of myself in uh -huh. that character as well. Huh. Like, I don't go as far as being, you know, saying outrageous things as, as he does, but I know I have it within me. Uh -huh. So it, it kind of keeps me like, lets me, uh, you know, just get like, it's a constant reminder, hey, you can be pretty stupid when you open your mouth, so just think before you speak. So the office has been like my <laughs> way of like I love it. You know what I mean? I think Ooh. like probably like like this past year's been kinda of tough because like two of the greatest like sports stars in, in the history of sports passed away. Uh huh. So like recently with when Maradona passed, like, you know, I didn't really know too much. I know his name, you know, he's world famous for being this amazing soccer player and, you know, represented for Argentina, they won the World Cup you know, and all this kind of stuff. But then you look back and like kind of maybe look back into like his clips to see what kind of a player he was, why he's such a revered legend, you know, and everything. And then going back and watching him play and seeing the joy that he played like football with, it's like, you can see why he was so attractive because he's like this little dude and he played with this joy. And watching his, his like games, his like skill level, like the way he expressed himself like so artistically mm -hmm. with this ball and this game. Like you can see how he touched all these people, and I don't know, just like seeing seeing that kind of stuff through sports, whether you know whatever it is, because you know sports can be considered an art too, whether it's acting or whatever it may be. Like if you can express yourself that way, like mm. all his joy, his love, his passion, whatever he put into that, you could see it when he played, and I think that people could associate with his passion, and just seeing that, it's like everyone needs to be passionate about something, you know. I, th I think we you know whether it's your family, whether it's your your job, whatever it may be, but like to see how much he put into that, it was like pretty impressive because I never really knew too much about you know his career and how he played. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's your cool thing to share? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah no, you know, I think it's like, you know, there's a great you, documentary. You gotta, you gotta look and yeah. see like whatever's going on now, someone did it before, whether it's music, whatever it is, like people are getting their inspiration from somewhere. You know, like Messi got his inspiration from Maradona. Where do you get your inspiration from? I mean, shit, when we were younger, you know, we like, you know, it was our dad got us into basketball, yeah. you know, and then like we were watching Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, you know, reading books about, you know, all these guys, you know, so that's how we got our Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, the, the people that came before us. And yeah, stuff. I mean, you know, like, like that famous like quote is like, what's past the pro? Like, what, like, you know, history, you know, is what we're looking at now. There's always people that did it before us. I think mine, uh, it could help you too, perhaps. Uh, it's a thing called Preply. Have you guys heard of Preply? Yeah. Uh, it's an app. Or you can go online. So it, not just not only just languages. I just used it properly. Oh, you did. That's you what used I, to, I just had a meeting Sunday morning at nine a.m. with this guy Andrew from South Carolina. It's 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 amazing. amazing. What is it? I, what I is wanted it? to work so it, it, not only languages, but every whatever topic that you want to learn from. There's just, experts. There's experts or different levels depending on your needs. You can just match yourself up based on uh, your your schedule and also mm. your needs and your level that you need. And you'll find a teacher from wherever across the world. So for so me, crazy. it's Spanish. Yeah. I want to kind of start speaking Spanish. How much I, is it? Oh, okay. Check this Cheap. out. <laughs> yeah. I found one for $2 an hour because the dude was in like Guadalajara or somewhere, right? Home Depot parking lot. Most yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't the US. <laughs> but it was somewhere, it's whatever country because the dollar is like different all over the world. Yeah. Right? Right. So I saw Yo. a $20 teacher to all the way down to a $2 teacher. I picked the pretty cute chick who was a $4 teacher. Ooh, yeah, $4 you pay an hour to just speak Espanol with me, 
But then I look, there's so many different topics. There's even acting. There's like all sorts. So oh. I was, so I'm I was doing like, wow. I'm even doing the Latin. That. So what? 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 Preply. Preply. Really cool. Yeah. So I found that yeah. really cool. Yeah. And um, huh? Affiliate link. Well, that, actually, yeah, yeah, we will put a link. Actually, the first um, class, the first one-hour class, is free. So when oh. you sign up, and this podcast up, yeah. is brought to you by <laughs> Preply. Preply. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> and the icebreaker pad. Uh. Before we end, let's just do one more. Would you rather? Yeah. All right, ready? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, <laughs> All right, ready? Would you rather be the star player on a losing football team or ride the bench on a winning one? I'm being star. Uh, star on losing? Fuck the bench. So Westbrook. All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, man, I won't want to be on the bench. Yeah, fuck yeah. that. And the star on the losing team makes more money than the bench player on go. the there winning team. What about you, Bobby? It, yeah, I would want to be a... A star on a losing team. So my, okay. <laughs> my friend Danny, who is here today sitting on the side. Uh-huh. So when we were young, we used to always talk about, I, I played like basketball and volleyball. He played badminton. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'd rather be the head of a chicken than the tail of a dragon. Uh, so I think I'd go with that. Yeah, the losing. So he was a chicken head, basically. Yeah, he was a chicken head. <laughs> <laughs> on the chicken head note. I, I, um, I think the star of a losing team is eventually going to be on the bench of a winning team. <laughs> That's uh, usually how it works. Yeah, and I, I was uh, the star of a losing team for many years mm. in my career. and, and it, it, I was also. It's a, it's a profitable niche market, mm. and uh, yeah, I have no complaints. No complaints. Yeah, I have no complaints. I think that's about that's pretty good for there you go yeah thanks for tuning in uh to the podcast where we ignore the buzzer <laughs> and talk over the second win ignore the buzzer uh, podcast. that's great we got to figure something out where we yeah, actually yeah. like stick to the buzzer but i i kind of felt like i wanted to talk about the the women's sports because we had another we just couple need topics. more time yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just yeah. it's so hard to squeeze it all in yeah, and, uh, yeah especially yeah. these complex topics yeah. we're getting better at it right right oh, yeah if we had the buzzer at the same time increments for, uh, would you rather fuck a fat chick or fuck a dude? I think we could fit it in within the buzzer. <laughs> um, and yeah, and if you have anything out answers. there you want to ask, we should we should talk about on uh, on here about minus fat chicks and and, and, and but why why are you discounting my idea? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to go against the grain. All right, everybody, have a great week. Have a great week. Bye bye. Later. Bye bye. Leave a comment below. <laughs>